Hey, welcome back. Welcome to the Rhinestone Roper Ranch. Let's do some trick roping. Today we're going to be talking about the wedding ring. The wedding ring is the, the medium-sized loop that the cowboy or cowgirl spins around themselves. It's a uh, classic trick. It takes a little time to learn, but it's not very difficult. And it doesn't expend a great deal of energy. So if you're wanting to, uh, to show off for your friends or do a little show or create atmosphere for an event, you can get the wedding ring going. You walk around with the wedding ring and do it for a long time and you don't get wore out. People like the wedding ring. They understand that your body is inside a big loop and that's all they need to know. They think if you can do the wedding ring, you must do be able to do a whole bunch of more tricks. So we're gonna talk about how to start the wedding ring. Uh, there's a lot of ways to learn to do the wedding ring. What I'm telling you is a good a way as any, and better than most. You need a rope that's appropriate for your size. I'm six foot three. My, uh, my arms span you know, approximately six feet. And I use a 21 foot rope. It's possible for little kids to learn how to do the wedding ring. A 15 foot rope is, is good for a little kid. So, if you're between this size and six foot three, it's someplace between 15 feet and 21 foot long is how long you want your rope. The right size of rope will give you a circle that is well away from your body. That way, when you're learning how, if you're kind of sloppy with your circle, the loop is wobbling all over the place. It's got some play. It's got some room to move before it hits your body. Once a wedding ring touches your body, most of the time it'll, it will collapse. So you want plenty of space inside your circle. I, I've seen uh, a few ropers who learned to do the wedding ring with a, with a, with a 15 foot rope. And that's, that's great if you can do it. There's a lot of tricks you can do with a 15 foot rope. But learning the wedding ring isn't, isn't the best thing to do with a 15 foot rope. And the only reason is, it's so small, you make, uh, you make a mistake or make a motion that's too big, that rope goes aside, it'll touch you right off the bat. So a bigger rope is better. And the bigger for you, it depends on how big your shoulders are and how long your arms are. For me, it's 21 feet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this rope up, pull it through the Honda. And as you know, this little circle here is the Honda. This loop here is the loop. And this piece of rope between my rope and hand and the Honda here is called the spoke. It's approximately three foot long for this 21 foot rope. And if you, uh, once you get the right proportions of your rope, you can you can mark your rope so you can start it at the same time every time, or you just put it here and, and measure it with your body, you know you're starting at the same every single time. Hold on to the spoke, and I, I tie a, a knot on the end of mine so my little finger can rest about against that. Well, we have a video that will show you how to tie that knot. But to rest that on my little finger, I'm going to stick two fingers out and grab the side of the loop. And the reason I stick two fingers out and grab it with just two fingers is because I'm going to let go of that in just a second. I'll let go of it with those two fingers and I've still got a hold of it with the with number three and four. So, I got my spoke, got my two fingers. I take my Honda here and I throw it away. I'm gonna bring about an, another uh, three or four feet of rope and hold on to it right here. And this hand goes on my belt buckle. And this hand stays on my belt buckle. So I throw my Honda and my spoke over to my right side. I'm right-handed, so you just reverse everything if you're left-handed. Hold to my left side. My loop is laying down in front of me with no kinks in it, no twists. Half of the loop is on the right of my right leg. Half the loop 
is between my legs. Now I'm going to, I'll just show you how it looks. Here, this is how we start it. Bring it around, let go, and reach back, reach back, reach back. What we did there to get this loop going was we're gonna engage the rope with our right hand. We're gonna bring it around, make sure that this side of the loop clears your left shoulder, comes around your head. When you come here, you let go of the loop with this hand hanging onto the spoke, and you let go of the loop in your left hand right down here. One thing that's difficult for almost everybody is we're gonna engage, engage this right hand with this, with this medium-sized motion. Your left hand is gonna want to do something. And what it's gonna wanna do, when you bring your right hand up, your left hand's gonna wanna come up and let go of the rope up here. The purpose of your left hand right here on your belt buckle is to make sure this side of the loop and this part of the this part of the loop and this whole side stays in front of you. If you bring this hand up, you throw the loop behind you and then you're outside of your loop. So through this whole process until you let go of the loop with both hands at the same time, this left hand stays right down here. It goes right here. That's all the motion you got with your left hand. You engage the right hand, the left hand stays steady. You bring it right here, let go of the loop right there, let go up there at the same time. And then you lift your chin and get your hand right above your head. I think you useful to think of, uh, of a cylinder. Your body is in a cylinder and it's not much bigger than your, than your shoulders. Shoulders here and the same distance in front. You want to keep your hand, your rope and hand, inside that cylinder. If you go like this, if your first motion is like this, a big motion getting your rope started, your, your hand is outside of the cylinder. The whole loop will want to follow your hand over there. You make this big motion to get it going and the loop comes and hits your leg and you're done right for the big end with. So what we're going to do, you start here with your elbow bent, your hand palm up about shoulder height, left hand has the rope right here on your butt buckle, you're going to bring it, start it right around here, you're going to watch this side of the loop, this side of the loop is going to come past your shoulder, all you want to do is clear your shoulder, it's like, ole, <laughs> it's not like this, it's like, like this, you're going to bring your elbow or your bicep up to your ear. Bring your bicep up to your ear. Bring the rope around. It's just right here past his shoulder. Bring it around the back. And you and you push that rope out of your hand right here next to your shoulder. Your left hand pushes out of that hand at the same time. Then you keep inside your cylinder. Bring that rope around. And your chin goes up. The reason your chin goes up is because you want your hand right above your head while you're spinning this loop. And it's a small circle, it's almost all wrist. If your chin is down, then this is above your head. And guess what, your hand is out in front of you. If your hand is in front of you, the loop will want to follow that hand, the loop will hit you in the back and you'll be done. You want to start here, bring it around that shoulder, let go over right here and come right up above your head. If you find something to focus on, if you're on, <clears throat> if you're in a room, if you're in a gym, focus on the corner up there on the ceiling. If you can look at a tree, focus on that tree. Go and get that chin up, and you might as well start practicing smiling right now. You want to smile when you do this. It's smiling is a skill. So, you get your stance, and the last thing is you're going to stand on your left leg. Stand on your left foot with your right toe up next to it. Now we'll put your body all in line. If you're standing like this, your loop is off to the right here. You wanna stand on your left leg and make sure, the way you make sure to stand on your left leg is you bring this toe up and bring it in close with your right, with your right leg. <laughs> Take it around here, stick your head through the loop, bring it around and let go. 
Now the other thing you want to focus on <laughs> is it's easy to make a circle in front because it's easy. You can see it and it's out front. It's hard to make the circle in back. Half that circle is behind you and you can't see it. And you got to stretch back there to get it. So you're going to be standing on your left leg, you got your chin up, bring it around, give that pond a time to get around your back. It comes around here. You know, really, this is all you can see in, in front. All the rest of that circle, most of the circle is behind you. You have to make sure you give your Honda enough time to go around you and not rush it. And reach back to make the circle. Reach back, reach back. So you start here, come around, let go and reach back. Reach back, reach back, give it time. Give it time behind. If you're having trouble getting it going, you want to pay attention to where the rope touches you. If the rope is touching you in the back, it means your hand's too far forward. If the rope is touching you on, on this leg, it means your hand is over here too far. Your hand is almost never, if, you're, if your elbow is above your head, you're almost never too far that way. Just lean over there. Give it time behind. Take this nice and slow. When you get set, get on your, your left leg or your off leg, get your hand. Get a smile on your face, lift your chin, and then take a breath and blow it out. This is a relaxing trick. It's a flat loop. Flat loops are slow. Vertical loops have to be fast to fight gravity, but flat loops, horizontal loops are nice and slow. Get it here, take it around nice and easy. Plop it down, bring it around, then reach back, and reach back. It's a slow loop. Take your time with it. I give mine a flick to get all the twists out. I make sure it's a smooth circle. Half the loop is uh, over here, half the loop is over there. I'm on my left foot. Thinking positive, nice and easy. Bring it around, let go. And reach back, reach back, reach back. Some of you will get this the very first time. Some of you will take a long time. It doesn't make any difference which one you are. The person who gets it the first time really doesn't impress me because the person who gets it the first time might not get it the third time. They may never get it again. If you have to do it a hundred times, that's a hundred mistakes you make that you might not ever make again. The only thing that makes a difference is if you're the person who sticks with it until you've got it. That's the only thing that makes a difference. If it takes you a thousand times, if you really want to learn it, it takes you a thousand times, put in those thousand. You're going you're gonna to luck out one day, it's just going to work and you're not going to know why. And that's true of everybody that gets it right the first time. Unless you have an expert there telling you why, you don't know why you got it right. You just gotta keep going till you luck onto it and get it right again, and then your brain will start realizing, wait a minute, that's the feeling. That's the feeling I want. That feeling will get it right. And then after a while, you'll get it right every time. Now when I spin this loop, I don't even, even when I try to do it wrong and screw it up, I almost can't, I almost can't screw it up. My body knows how to do it. That's how you wanna be. Don't worry about failing. When we practice a skill, most of, most of my time practicing is failing. You know, I do a show and people think it's great. I go to the gym and practice. I, I don't practice the things I know how to do. I practice the things that are on the edge of my skill level. People come and look at me and I've had guys come out and say, don't worry, you'll get it someday. I want to, I want to say, go away. I'm a professional trick roper. Of course, you can't say that because then you sound stupid. But. Failing, failing is part of it. When you're practicing, failing is the biggest part. The guy who keeps going, or the girl he keeps going, is the girl that gets it right in the end. Take it around, let go. 
Nice and easy. Reach back. Make sure you clear the shoulder with your hand. Reach over and reach back. Over and back. Over and back. Keep your elbow high. Pay, pay close attention to the size of my circle up there. My arm, once I get this going, my arm is not moving much, is it? It's all on the wrist. One reason the Turk's head knot is so good for this trick, because if you do it for very long, that rope needs to twist in your hand. That round knot twists very good. If there's no knot on this, the, the rope would spin and, and, and finally it would slip out of my hand. If you use a, uh, an overhand knot, you know, that, that knot does not twist very well doesn't slide across your finger but this one does you can try to hold it nice and loose so this twist by itself it'll work its way out of your hand if you do that what you want to do is you're alternating the grip between your little finger and your th and your third finger and your first finger and your thumb so you hold on here so you can get another grasp with your thumb and forefinger and then you twist it and then you grab again twist and grab Twist and grab, twist and grab, twist and grab. Now I went, I went uh, like 20 years. I didn't even know that I was doing that. I know I was twisting it, but I didn't know what the uh, what the process was. So this is a process you you don't have to memorize. You're going to do it naturally. What I'm saying is, just don't hold it, hold it light, hoping it'll twist and stay in your hand. You got to twist it your twist it yourself. Grab and a twist, grab and twist. Let go. As you bring your rope around to get it started, you come around, around behind your back. When you can see it in your peripheral vision, you let go of that loop. And if your spoke is wrapped around the side of your loop, it'll all hang up and it won't work. So when you're getting this going, you want to make sure that they're not the spoke and the side of the loop are not tangled. And to make sure they get a clean separation, you bring it around, you want to give it just a little bit of a punch down. Punch it down. The tendency is to bring it around and sling it sideways. If you sling it, you bring it around, sling it sideways, you sped it up. You're only going, you're only going this fast and you just slung it so the rope is going this fast and it's not going to work. So. Be sure you bring it around, you throw it straight down and then straight up above your head, spiral up above your head and, and make your circle. If you throw it down too hard, the Honda will slide. <clears throat> As you'll discover, there is a perfect proportion between the size of your loop and the length of your spoke. Now, if your spoke, if it's if your Honda slides down, that makes your spoke too long. And as you're spinning it, what that spoke will do, that spoke will will bow out to the side. And all that does is is try to force your Honda down even farther to make it worse. And if you spun it a little fast, and centrifugal force has overpowered gravity, and force that spoke up towards your hand, then your spoke is too short. Now you can slow that loop down, slow it down to give it a little jig and, and let that Honda go back down, then you can pick your speed up again. You should be able, if your Honda has slid too far, that little jig you gave it when you, when you threw that down helped gravity overpower the centrifugal force trying to expand the loop. Gravity took your, your spoke too far down. You should be able to just speed it up, right? Wrong. If it's only a little bit too far down, your spoke is a little bit long, then you can speed it up and bring the Honda up to where you want and then slow down to that medium speed. But if your spoke is bowed out, 
you're swinging around the spoke is bowed out to your loop then you're you're then that's a failure your loop is going to get smaller as you go so what you have to do you have to reach up and grab that rope and pull it through your hand you keep got to keep spinning you reach up pull it through your hand to make that spoke the right proportion then you can speed it up a little bit and you'll feel the Honda slipping towards your hand you just let that let that spoke out until you got the full size of your loop and your your spoke is the right size everything we've talked about you can do with a long rope if it's a real long rope you want to toss that rope out so as you spin it the rope will twist those twists will work their way right out the end if it's a medium-sized rope you don't have to worry about it so we'll start our wedding ring Now I can keep it right this size if I keep the right speed. If I slow down too much, the Honda will slide down. If I speed up, centrifugal force overpowers gravity on that Honda, and the Honda slides a little bit. I'm just letting a little bit out. I'm twisting it with both hands, keeping the twist out. This is just a wedding ring with a long rope. We're building it. Building it as it gets longer, it takes more energy. You got to make a little bigger circle with your hand. I got the size I want, so I slowed down a little bit. There we go. Thanks for joining us. That's how to learn the wedding ring. Now, if you're working on this and you've hit a hit something, the same thing is happening over and go over again and you don't know what the problem is, uh, email me. Tell me what, what you're experiencing. I'll probably be able to give you some tips on how to, uh, how to change that circumstance. If you're able to film it, that's, that's much better. Film yourself doing the trick. Uh, email it to me at rhinestoneroper, uh, rhinestoneroper at gmail.com and we'll work those, uh, work those kinks out for you. All right, have fun roping, everybody.